Standard & Poor's has just published a piece of research that looks at the funding deficit for EU infrastructure. Today I'm speaking with Michael Wilkins, Head of Research for Infrastructure Finance at Standard & Poor's. Hi, Michael, how are you? Hi, good, thanks. Good. Um, so this report is quite interesting. Um, it talks about the fact that um, public sector funding for infrastructure in the EU is actually um, running a deficit. Can you explain to our viewers why that is? Sure. Um, there's two things needed for infrastructure uh, to get off the ground. One is the funding, which comes from the public sector side, and the other thing is the financing, which typically comes from the private sector side. And what we're saying in our research, uh, which we're publishing today, is that there is a funding deficit from the public sector, uh, which is not matching the private financing surplus. Uh, and as a result, we're not seeing projects getting built. And we believe this is a, a lost opportunity, given that we're now in a period of historically low interest rates, and there's a huge infrastructure funding requirement, not just in Europe, but globally. Uh, and we're also seeing that uh, institutional investors are really keen to put their money to work in infrastructure. We've estimated somewhere in the region of $80 billion worth of insurers' money ready to go in to the infrastructure sector, but there are not enough deals for them to invest in. And that's because, as we argue, the public sector is not putting these deals forward. They're not funding the deals. Okay, so as part of this research, you talked to a lot of mm. key policymakers, industry executives. Uh, what, did, what did you find when you talked to them about this issue? Well, we did some primary research where we talked to about a dozen or so key market players and policy uh, policymakers within the Eurozone. And as you'll see from this chart, the results of our research show that it's actually affordability and austerity, which were two key barriers to stopping the funding of infrastructure in the Eurozone. So we are, there are other aspects. You know, the chart will show the perception of risk, um, issues related to the distrust of the private sector, issues related to lack of resources and training, but it's really affordability and austerity. And this is reflects that we've just gone through a period of recession. There's a huge amount of, of, of fear amongst governments in the Eurozone about having too much debt. And the other part of our research was the statistical analysis of the key factors which stop uh, investment. And that analysis shows that it's actually high indebtedness within the sovereign side, and also um, the provision of private capital in terms of credit. Um, that acts as a disincentive to governments funding infrastructure. Okay, so we know what the problems are. What, how do we bridge this gap? What, what can yeah. change? I think there, there are quite a number of solutions out there. One of the key solutions is trying to find a way of enticing the private sector into infrastructure. And one of the ways of doing that is uh, public-private partnerships. If you look at this chart, you'll see that there has been quite a number of private-public partnerships, or PPPs, executed in Europe over the past four years, although the picture is patchy. Uh, the UK, for example, has the best record of PPPs, but if you go across other countries, in fact, it's, you know, um, in the southern zone, it's actually been quite a, a dearth of projects being funded this way, although Spain seems to be picking up over the past year. What we say is that there is a need for more partnerships between the public sector and the private sector to get projects off the ground. Uh, this allows the public sector to allocate funding. Um, hopefully, if uh, they can com uh, combine this with compliance with Eurostat rules, keeps it off their balance sheet, which is important uh, mm -hmm. in terms of levels of indebtedness. But also for the private sector, they need to know that they've got the adequate risk transfer in the transactions that they fund. And the PPP framework does allocate risks to those which are best able to uh, take those risks on and, and execute the project. So PPP frameworks have been shown to work very well in Canada, uh, in Australia, uh, and in the UK for that matter. So they're good examples of where the funding deficit can be overcome uh, but, and also enticing that some of that surplus in the private sector to come in and help build more projects. Okay, very interesting. So we'll see what happens. Thank you. For this report, as well as all of our research, you can go to www.spratings.com. Thanks for watching.